Hello and welcome to another TLDR UK video. In this one, we're going to be taking a look at the Greensill lobbying scandal involving former Prime Minister David Cameron. You might have seen this story floating around over the weekend, but we want to dive in deep and see what's really going on, and if the former Prime Minister is as dodgy as Dennis Skinner once claimed. Before we start, please consider subscribing to the channel. A big percentage of you haven't made the leap yet, so hitting the button means that you can get more content from us and helps us out because we're so close to 500,000. Thank you so much for your support. So if you live in the UK and you've looked at the news recently, you've almost certainly seen some stories about David Cameron and Greensill. In this video, we're going to try and explain exactly what happened, why it's being called a scandal, and how it represents a broader problem in British politics. Let's start with Greensill though. Greensill Capital is a financial company that specialises in something very financy, called supply chain finance. Essentially, Greensill pays suppliers as soon as they supply whatever it is they're supplying, and then gets its money back when the bills are eventually paid by the customer. Anyway, precisely what Greensill does doesn't particularly matter to this story. When the pandemic struck, Greensill asked to be part of the government's COVID corporate financing facility, or CCFF, which was basically a program in which the government would loan money in order to keep credit flowing throughout the economy. Now, in an interview with Sky News back in March 2020, Greensill founder Lex Greensill claimed that he wanted Greensill to be part of CCFF to help small businesses get access to these sorts of government schemes. But obviously, Greensill would have made a lot of money from it themselves too. Anyway, the government initially said no, so Greensill went to David Cameron to lobby for them, who had been working as a paid advisor for Greensill since August 2018. By the way, Greensill was founded by Lex Greensill, a billionaire Australian financier who worked for Cameron's government as an unpaid advisor from 2011. This is where it gets a bit dodgy though. Cameron texted Rishi Sunak twice in April, asking him to reconsider the government's decision, as well as lobbying two other junior treasury ministers, Jesse Norman and John Glenn. Sunak has released his responses to the texts, in which he says he'll push the Treasury to explore an alternative. Unfortunately for Cameron, however, the government stuck with their original decision, and Greensill was excluded from CCFF, despite Sunak's promised efforts. As it happens, Greensill collapsed in March of this year, leaving Cameron's share options, which would reportedly have been worth about £60 million, worthless. Greensill's collapse also put pressure on GFG Alliance, a massive company run by Sanjeev Gupta, which used Greensill for financing. This is only interesting because if GFG went bust, the British taxpayer would be exposed to about £1 billion worth of debt. Anyway, while Cameron's lobbying was ultimately unsuccessful, it still caused a stir in the media, because an ex-Prime Minister texting the Chancellor for a favour so that he doesn't lose £60 million worth of shares just looks a bit dodgy, successful or not. And this wasn't the first time either. In October 2019, Cameron organised a private drink with him, Lex Greensill and Matt Hancock to talk about implementing Greensill's earned platform in the NHS. In the end, Greensill offered the platform for free in March of 2020 as a thank you for the NHS, but if we're being cynical, it perhaps was also in the hope that it might convince the government to let Greensill into the CCF. Basically, Cameron was privately lobbying ministers to use his failing company, which, if they had, would have made him a lot of money. Anyway, after the Sunday Times and Financial Times found out about this dodgy lobbying in March, Cameron was himself investigated by the Registrar of Consultant Lobbyists, which, ironically, he himself set up under the Transparency and Lobbying Non-Party Campaigning and Trade Union Administration Act of 2014. This is another reason why the press is so keen on the story. Cameron was vocally anti-lobby when he was Prime Minister, and hypocrisy always makes good press. It's the next big scandal waiting to happen. It's an issue that frankly crosses party lines and has tainted our politics for too long. It's an issue that exposes the far too cosy relationship between politics, government, business and money. I'm talking about lobbying. And we all know how it works. The lunches, the hospitality, the quiet word in the ear, 
the ex-ministers and ex-advisors for hire, helping big businesses find the right way to get its way. Anyway, the registrar concluded that Cameron's lobbying activities were out of its scope, largely because, according to current rules, ex-ministers are only banned from lobbying for two years after they leave government, and Cameron's lobbying only started in August 2018 when he joined Greensill, just barely two years after he left office in July 2016. Anyway, two years had just about passed, so Cameron was cleared, finally issuing a statement on Sunday the 11th of April, in which he accused the press of giving the misleading impression that he and Lex Greensill were close when Greensill worked as an advisor in the government, as well as overstating the value of his share options, and, well, Cameron basically just denied any wrongdoing. Regardless, the very next day, the government announced a review into Greensill and supply chain finance in government. Although it's worth noting that the review doesn't actually explicitly say it will look into lobbying or Cameron, just how supply chain finance works. Anyway, so that's what's actually happened with Cameron and Greensill, and why it's been making the front pages so much recently. As a last thing, it's easy to see this story as a classic dodgy Dave story. This man has done more to divide this nation than anybody else. He's looked after his own pocket. I still refer to him as Dodgy Dave. Do what you like. But it's worth keeping in mind that this is a symptom of a more general problem in British politics. Access to government is a marketable asset because legislation influences markets and government contracts are lucrative. There's also a limited supply of this asset because there are only so many MPs or ex-MPs with the required connections. So in purely economic terms, it makes sense that billionaires like Lex Greensill pay ex-ministers or even prime ministers like David Cameron tons of money for their connections. This obviously isn't ideal, because it means that wealthy billionaires like Lex Greensill get to influence politics. Now, the obvious solution to this would just be to ban ex-ministers or ex-MPs from lobbying at all. But there's no way that MPs would pass the required legislation. Because if you're an MP, you want to make sure there's a lobbying job waiting for you if and when you lose your seat. Essentially, the guarantee of a lobbying job is compensation for the terrible job security in politics. Now, the obvious solution to this problem would be to pay MPs enough, or at least offer severance packages, so that they wouldn't need the lobbying safety net. But obviously this is unpopular for different reasons. All in all, David Cameron's dodgy lobbying has made the headlines because it's classic cronyism. But the real problem is that Cameron's lobbying is completely legal, and it's difficult to imagine the legislation changing anytime soon. Let us know what you think about the state of lobbying in British politics, as well as whether you think that MPs should be compensated more. Comment your thoughts down below. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to be notified every time we release a new video. Special thanks to our Patreon backers who make videos like this one possible. And if you want to see your name at the end of videos, then you too can back us on Patreon. The link to that's in the description.